What's going on everybody? This is Gideon from Man Entertainment. It's been a minute. It's been a long time since I've done a video. The last one I did was for the recruitment that we did in um, back in uh, uh, sometime last year, before COVID. I know it was before COVID-19. So just wanted to give a quick update about um, what's going on with us in the studio. So uh, we have about six to seven people that are, uh, no, about eight people all together that are working on Space Exodus. Um, we're refining it. Uh, we've taken a considerable amount of time to try to figure out some of the, the systems, especially the, the online um, integration, like having an online leaderboard and uh, being able to store player data so that if you change your devices, you know, um, you can go ahead and update all your data without having to start over from the beginning and actually fixing the game to make sure that it works like it was designed. We have um, a free prototype on the Google Play Store it's um it's a free beta it's open beta but uh we haven't updated it in quite a long time so the version that's there is very uh feature incomplete doesn't have a lot of things in it so just wanted to give that update we still have people working on on the game as we speak um got a lot of cool up art dates i'll probably show some right here um when i edit the video cool things that have been do being done behind the scenes so um we're trying to get the game basically to a complete state where we might do updates in the future, and that's cool, but at least for now, have a complete experience that players can play and, uh, you know, make it free to to play and hopefully um, make players feel like they can enjoy the game without having to spend any money. But, you know, um, we, we're going to have an ad system and in-app in purchases for people that feel like they want to support, you know, the team and all the work that we've been doing. That'll be that for that. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and drop that intro and then after the intro we'll get into the new topic which is the title of the video and um kind of put together a little list of what i think makes an action rpg really really good and um also the reason why i haven't been like a big fan of action rpgs lately but, um, you know, and uh, specifically Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, uh, yeah, I, I hate the game. I, I, I don't like it at all. And Final Fantasy XV, I, I don't remember anything about it. The characters were memorable and stuff like that, right? So, pretty much what I concluded or what I figured out, at least this is um, my opinion or analysis on, on, you know, action RPGs in general, is I feel like, number one, if you have an RPG in the title, you have a role-playing game, right? So you're going to play the role of a character, that's fine, but RPGs have always been known, the best RPGs have been known for having really good stories, you know, for having sweeping stories with characters that are memorable, that are, um, you know, uh, they have good character development arcs, the story actually is engrossing or deep or actually makes you care about the characters and what they're going through and makes you feel invested in the characters, right? So those are the four things for a story that needs to be really, really well done for an action RPG, or I'm sorry, for an RPG period, right? But then when you decide to make a game an action RPG, you know, you can go the turn-based route or you can go the strategy route, which is two of my favorite genres is turn-based RPGs, and um, but I really, really love strategy RPGs. And what I mean by that are tactical RPGs. So you could think of games like Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, a more modern example would be something like Valkyria Chronicles, but I also love the original Shining Force 1 and 2 for the Sega Genesis. Um, you know, uh, Ogre Battle and uh, Tactics Ogre, those games were my jam. And of course, the Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced games. So when you decide not to go to that route, the in those games, in, in turn-based and in strategy or, or tactical RPGs, what you want to do is you want to focus on making the challenge, you know, thought. It's basically a mind game. So it's similar to like chess or or something where, where the strategy is very like, you know, mind-based. It's very cerebral. You want to think about like, you know, how you're going to bring in an army or your group or whatever and kind of overpower like an enemy that might be way more advanced than you or way stronger than you. So that's the fun of what makes those games really fun for me is like you're commanding this army and like Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'm playing that right now and I'm absolutely in love with the game. But when it comes to an action RPG, once you, once you decide to go the action route, you got to bring the action in a way that's going to be really, really fun, right? So I determined, in my opinion, there's two ways to do this. One is either you make the combat very strategic and challenging so that when you're in the action, the focus is, the reward is overcoming the difficult fight, right? Or overcoming the difficult enemy or enemies, Right. So in an action RPG, um, a good example of something that does that, and you may not consider it an action RPG, but I do, 
is the soul series or like um you know starting with demon souls and then the dark souls and eventually all the souls games that we have like bloodborne and uh neo for the playstation as well um those games i consider them action rpgs because you do level up like an rpg uh you do have somewhat of a story you may not be going through a quest like an like some traditional action rpgs but you know it's still an rpg in terms of you have character development character progression you have a story that continues the you know as you as you keep playing but the reward of those games is you know you you get really good and when you beat something that's very hard you feel really good about yourself that's that's what makes the action worth it in those games now where you have something like breath of the wild uh zelda or even like you know before that um uh skyward sword or twilight princess or wind waker when you have zelda games um their their focus is a little bit on the strategic aspect of the battle right so in dark souls it's brutally hard so you really got to learn patterns Whereas in Zelda, more than patterns, it's more like learning what works against enemies and what do doesn't. And I feel like that um, risk reward of being able to find out, you know, oh, like this is really good against uh, like a Moblin type enemy, but this is better against like a Stalfos or like a, you know, um, like one of those giant uh, ogre things. So like in Zelda, the combat is not just straightforward. So for example, you can't just go and hack and slash at everything and beat it, right? And those games were like, you know, they were very straightforward. The The focus wasn't so much on the action itself as it was on the, you know, on the story and the character development and stuff like that. So that's what saved those games. But in modern action RPGs, right, you got to have either that, so tactical or strategic combat involved in the action to be fun, or you have to have what I call the, the Diablo influence, right? So in Diablo and every game that's been inspired by Diablo, like all the looter games, like looter shooters or like, you know, dungeon crawler looter games. So um, like, you know, what comes to mind right now is like Destiny, uh, Destiny 1 and 2, um, Borderlands. Those are looter shooters, but, you know, they're all very much inspired by Diablo. And then you have obviously your Diablo games, Titan Quest, stuff like that, you know, games that are like more traditional action RPG. But what makes those games fun is that even though the combat is very repetitive and very, um, you know, you're just basically pressing one or two buttons and like picking a move here and there if you want. You don't even need to do that a lot of times unless it's like a heal or an item for a potion. But what makes those games fun is the rewards of getting randomly generated gear, you know, or new equipment that'll be really, really cool. And that's what makes it exciting to go through similar, you know, dungeons over and over and over again. And the story for those games don't matter as much because the 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 key focus is in getting super cool gear you know the, the cooler the gear the better so you can go with one or the other or you can do a combination of the two right there's a few games that try to do that i'm not sure if, if i can think of one off the top of my head that's really really good because i'm not i didn't prepare this i just wanted to talk about it so um yeah but uh basically i in my opinion those are the things that makes an action rpg good so you could either have the strategic or like thoughtful combat or you can have the mindless but very high um reward combat of getting like you know really cool items really cool gear and you know making your character super cool and usually those kind of games like for those to succeed in the modern day or not to succeed but to be considered like a, a good game you got to have some sort of online competitive aspect to it right or like a uh, pvp or like you know like basically joining with other people and fighting online so that's that right so for for the action aspect of it you really got to have like something that makes it fun because i feel like for example final fantasy 15 and final fantasy 15 is more guilty of this than 7 remake but 15 is kind of like you can just press x all day and you don't really need to use the magic you don't really need to do summons it's cool you know if you feel like doing it you can but you don't need it and um for the most part you know unless you crank the difficulty all the way up it's mindless you don't you don't got to think about it you don't got to invest yourself into becoming skilled for those kind of games right but then in Final Fantasy VII Remake, they tried to remedy that by having the, the roll and the dodge and hiding behind things, you know, the cover system, and that you could only hit aerial enemies with certain characters. And that does add a layer of strategy to it. I'm not going to say that it's the worst system ever, but for me personally, I find it very boring and I find it very um, fake, like a fake strategy, right? It's like, yeah, you have the idea of like, oh, I can't hit this aerial thing with cloud, so I got to switch to Barrett. Or I got to switch, you know, to a magic user or something like that. So while that seems like a little bit more interesting, but then it comes down to why I can't stand those kind of games and why, in my opinion, even though they're financial successes 
and people for for whatever reason you know they like it and everybody's entitled to their opinion so whatever you you know if you like the game and you disagree with me i mean whatever that that's how it is right everybody has an opinion but um what makes those games horrible for me and why i refuse to you know play them or invest into them or 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 ever like look forward to another square enix action rpg again is because the story is so horribly bad right so um for for those of you that don't know um ff7 remake it retcons the original story of final fantasy 7 and the way that they did that was they went with these like harry potter-esque um ghost things that protect the timeline right so you basically have this contrived story of like Oh man, like um, so many things is happening on this alternate reality. They're trying to do an Avengers Endgame kind of thing, right? And um, oh, and that's why you have Sephiroth from the very beginning, right? It's like oh, and then Square Enix calls it a sequel, and then they so see when you ask them a question about what, what is the game, they they're, it's either a remake because they remade the game, which is incredibly stupid, and the reason for that is because. Even when you port a game on an existing generation, right? If you're porting a game, if you design the game for PlayStation 5 and you port it to Xbox Series X, you have to remake a lot of the, the programming, the code, to work on the different operating system, to work with the different specs, right? Even if the specs are very, very close, you got to make it work on a different operating system, which is why for our game, for Android, we can't just take the game and copy the, the code and paste it into the, uh, the iOS version. Yeah, so you actually need to look for someone uh, who's going to be able to port the code or translate the code to work on the iOS, on Apple phones, right? Or on iPads or on uh, whatever iProduct. And that's not something you could just do by like saying, here, let me copy the code and paste it and it's done. Like that's not how it works. So by that definition that Square Enix gave of like, oh, it's a remake because we remade the game from the ground up. No, it's not. It's a reimagining. It's a reboot. But then you ask them, you press people on this, right? And they say, oh, it's a sequel. Don't you get it? You have to play the game to know it's a sequel. Well, yeah, guess what? I've seen the, I seen the playthroughs. I've I seen the ending of the game. I've seen the entire story from beginning to end. And it's not a sequel. That's not how you do a sequel. If you do a sequel and call it a reboot, then you're a horrible storyteller, right? And uh, not for nothing, but I blame Tetsuya Nomura's influence on Final Fantasy. Because ever since he got involved, I mean, just look at Kingdom Hearts 3. The only reason I played and beat Kingdom Hearts 3 is because my daughters enjoy Disney characters and they love the Frozen part. And for me, that was nice. You know, I like to give them like something to, to watch or to enjoy with their daddy. So that was fun for me to do. But I hated Kingdom Hearts 3. I was like, this is the most contrived, most like wishy-washy, plot hole, incomplete story I've ever played in a game. And I loved Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. So I don't know what happened. I mean, I feel like this is like something like where they, they let him off the reins and that's what we get. We get weird alternate reality, time travel, interacting with the same characters among different times and different dimensions and all this kind of crap. And if you think about it, all of that could be done very elegantly and very cool if you kind of build up to it. Like, you know, Avengers Endgame didn't just throw that at you at the last minute. So anyway, I'm ranting a little bit, but, you know, I'm going to end it here so I can keep the video kind of short. So just to recap and just to, you know, reiterate what I was saying, what makes an action RPG good is, first of all, you got to have a good writing team. You got to have a good story. You got to have good characters that are memorable, you know, well-designed characters in the writing and the design. You got to have uh, character progression. You got to have them go through something, right? Like who cares about a character if they're just like existing and they don't do anything or they, they don't have any challenges. Nothing is making them, you know, succeed or go forward or push forward or whatever. You got to have good story, good character development, a good plot, good directing too, because it's it, a lot of it has to do with timing, right? Because if you look at Final Fantasy VII, the original, it took us like the first disc just about to get to the point where we have that famous Aerith, Aerith scene, you know, the Aerith scene where that happens was impactful. It, it really hits you hard because you're like, oh, wow, you built up all this time and you didn't see it coming the first time around. But when they did it in the remake, it was just like, oh, remember that scene? Well, guess what? We're going to make it look even cooler with fancy graphics. Like good graphics and good audio, That's that's that should be a, a, a standard. That shouldn't be something that you set as, as like, oh, wow, look, our game looks so good. Look at the graphics. Like buy it because of the graphics. Like that's that's stupid. If you want good graphics, just watch a movie, right? Just watch a good movie. Watch a CGI movie or watch a good movie that's that's out. You know, uh, Hollywood has good graphics all the time. I mean, look at the Transformers movies or, or like, you know, anything by, um, what's this guy that he loves explosions? Uh, I forgot his name, but whatever. Um, if I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the... Anyway, my point is, you can just watch a, a big budget Hollywood movie. There's uh, Kong versus Godzilla coming out soon. That has amazing graphics. I mean, 
I, I the story looks stupid. It looks ridiculous. But when I seen King Kong clock the, the the freaking Godzilla and and you just see him falling into the ocean, I was like, oh snap! That's the kind of mindless action that I'm okay with because it's a movie. It's a ten to let's say twenty dollar investment at the most, right? And if I decide to buy the movie, which I wouldn't, I would just rent it or stream it. If I decided to buy the movie, 25 bucks, okay? We're not talking a $60 thing that I'm going to invest hours and hours and hours and hours of my time to have this mediocre, wishy-washy story with horrible or boring, uninspired combat. FF7 Crisis Core, okay? Let me just, as a FYI, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core had an amazing story because it was already working with the with what the original built in Final Fantasy VII. It was well done, and because it was well done, I was able to enjoy, even though the combat was kind of mediocre. I didn't care for the combat. It was challenging at times, but it wasn't anything that I would go back and play the game like, oh my god, I need to play this game so bad. I ranted a little bit. I let you guys know what was going on with Man Entertainment. Um, we have some cool stuff that hopefully we'll be sharing with you guys soon. And that's my take on what makes an action RPG good. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the likes, all the views, uh, any subscriptions that you guys have is cool. For the future, we're going to try to keep the videos more professional, more on a business tip. But I just wanted to do this because, you know, we're still uh, an indie company. And I have fun doing these videos every now and then. It's not something that I'm trying to become like a big YouTuber or anything like that. But I enjoy, you know, having conversations. And if you guys have any thoughts on this, if you disagree with me, let me know why in the comment section down below. And if you do agree with us, you know, show us some love. Like, let us know uh, what you agree with and what you don't. This is Gideon from Man Entertainment. It's been a good one. Peace. Stay safe. Wear masks. Um, yeah, speaking of masks, I got my mask. I'm going to go pick up my kids now. So be good. Stay safe. COVID-19 is real out there. It sucks. And uh, hope everything goes well for everybody, man. Have a good one. Happy 2021. May it be better than 2020. And now I'm going to drop this picture that I made. And hopefully you guys can check it out and spread it around. Make a meme out of it. Make it uh, fun or whatever. All right. Have a good one, guys. Peace.